Welcome to r slash Tales from Retail, where we share stories of your bosses, employees, or those interesting customers you see daily. And the first story is… The Angry Lady in the Check – The First Attempt This may end up being a saga of several stories, as honestly I had no end of problems with this same lady over the course of a year. It ended rather spectacularly, but I don't want to spoil things. Ok, some background. At the time this story takes place, I was a young assistant manager of a clothing store, in training to take over the store from the existing manager, who was moving on to another store that was set to open soon. During my training, it was made clear to me that we could only accept checks, paper checks, that should give you an idea when this took place, that were drawn on a bank located in our state. We were forbidden from accepting starter checks, checks where you had to write in the name and address, as well as checks drawn on banks that were out of state, even if that bank also had branches in our state. Now, the first two were down to simple fraud, as there was, at the time, a thing where people would deposit the minimum to open an account, get the starter or write in checks, and go on a spending spree. It'd take three or four days for the fraud to be found out, and by then the person was long gone. The last one, the out-of-state thing, though, well, that one was harder to explain. See, at the time, the state I was in had this law on the books that basically stated that if a person from out-of-state bounced a check, then that person would be charged with felony fraud charges even if it was the first time or just a simple mistake. Furthermore, any employee who accepted an out-of-state check, regardless of how long they worked for the company, would be fired on the spot. So on to the story. It's getting close to Christmas and business is booming. Even for our small store, it's apparent we're going to make well above what we had been projected of making in sales based on past sales. I'm doing my thing in the men's department, working on selling a suit to a gentleman, when a call comes over the PA. Management to women's apparel for customer service. Okay, that's rare. Usually meant some customer was peeved at a cashier for something, but truth be known that rarely happened. Usually customers just came to track down any available manager. I pass my sale off to the clerk and head over in the direction of women's apparel. Dot, not her name, the women's department manager is standing at the register with this lady, who I'll call Princess due to how she was acting. Dot says something to the lady, whose face is screwed up like she took a massive bite out of a salted lemon and then heads my way. Mr. Fox, we have something of a problem here, Dot says. Gee, you think? I find myself thinking as Dot explains. The lady in question had been shopping for Christmas gifts for her family and had pulled together close to $2,000 worth of various kinds of clothing, shoes, and cologne slash perfume items. What's more, she had asked to pay with a check. Ah, so you need me to verify it due to the amount I asked? That was another weird little thing with the store. Checks over $200 had to have management verification or approval to be used. It was more a formality than anything and we tended to just check ID and then initial them before heading back to whatever we were doing. Ah, uh, no, well, yes, but no, there's a problem, Dot says and hands me the check. I glance down at it, see it's drawn on a Florida bank and inhale sharply. I glance back at the lady, who's giving me looks that could kill, and back to Dot. So what do we do, Dot asks. I shrug and tell her that I'll handle things and approach the lady, who gives me one look of pure distaste, before crossing her arms expectantly. Well, Princess asks, and then points, is my money good enough for you? It takes everything in my body not to just say no and walk away. Well, there's a problem with the check, I say, as politely as I can. What do you mean there's a problem? Princess practically yells. Well, I hate to say this, but we can't accept this form of payment from you, I start. I don't finish it though, as Princess yells, why the heck not? She then starts interrupting me every time I try to explain, before I get a good bit exasperated with her and say, would you please listen to me for a moment? I'm trying to explain the issue to you. It's not just a company policy. This is based on a state law. She looks ready to start in on another rant, and I take that pause as she draws in a breath to quickly explain. State law says that if I accept this and it fails to go through, regardless of if it's just a communication error, your banks close the day they call for payment, or God forbid it bounces, then a felony warrant for interstate fraud will be taken out on you, and you will be arrested and charged. The penalty for that being a fine of about $50,000 and a minimum of five years in state prison. Well, my money's good, she spits at me, figuratively, not literally. Be that as it may, I can't accept this, I say, standing my ground. Well, Wally World does, she retorts. They're able to instantly draw from the bank account. We don't have that system here. It doesn't hurt that they have stores in your home state and we do not. Do you have any other method of paying? I ask again, through mildly clenched teeth, as she's getting on my nerves at this point. Princess just points at the check. That's it, so either take it or I'll take my business elsewhere. I'm done with her at this point and turn to Dot. Go ahead and put that all in the back. We'll put it back on the shelves in the morning, I say, and hand her the check back. From the shocked look on her face, it's apparent she didn't expect me to actually stand my ground. 
Dot proceeds to grab up the items, doing as I instructed, while I hand Princess her check back. She just stands there looking like a fish out of water for a bit, and then heads outside. I figure she's leaving. I was wrong. Probably 20 minutes pass, when in comes a couple of police officers. They head over to speak with Dot, who calls management back to her department. As I approach, I see that Princess is there, along with the officers. One of them approaches me, and says that Princess had called them to report that I had stolen purchases she had made, taking them and putting them in the back, after she had already paid for them. The officers wanted my side of the story, which I gave, within earshot of Princess. She ended up shooting herself in the foot about halfway through the officer talking to me, as I was explaining the problem to him, by screaming, tell him that he has to take my check, I want my purchases. The officer promptly turns on her and asks her to repeat that, and she does, before he says, I thought you said you'd already bought them. She blinks, realizing her mistake, but the damage is done. The cops are simply done with her. They instruct her to leave, making it very clear that everything I had previously said about the check was true, if oversimplified. She, however, refuses to leave, doubling down on the idea she would force us to take her check. At this point, it's close to closing. I've got work to do, and this lady is giving me a pounding headache. I want her out of the store, pure and simple. So I opt to use one more thing for my arsenal. I turn to the officer and say, I don't want her in the store and I don't ever want her coming back. The officer nods, understanding the wording here, and tells Princess in no uncertain terms that she's now trespassed from the store, and if she ever sets foot in it again, she can and will be arrested. Princess eventually does leave, and the saga of dealing with her ends for about six months. It was a nice quiet time, right up to the point that her dour face once more darkened my store's doors. The second story is... That time we had to call the cops. Hello, I'm gonna call Crazy Man CM, my coworker CW, and my manager M. So at the time I was working in a place that sells undergarments for both men and women. Men's was actually our best selling department. The most important fact to know in this story is that boxers cost more than boxer briefs. Moving right along, you know how customers just love to pick things up and abandon them in the wrong place? Well this time that ended up with a butterfly effect, in which we needed to call the police and get security escorts to our cars at the end of the night due to an absolutely psychotic man not getting his way. We had both a wall lined with products for men, as well as a couple bins in the men's section for excess stock, for customers to take what they needed. One of these bins contained boxer briefs. I'm sure you all know where this is going. A large red-headed man, like at least 6 foot and 250, muscular, walks up to CW's register with a pack of boxers and a pack of socks to get our BOGO 50% off promotion. This is CM. CW, who's a little old lady by the way rings up his items and tells him his total. I'm on the register next to her as it was a busy weekend day, so I can hear all of this. Not that I'll need to be that close. CM starts flipping out. CM, why is it so expensive? I didn't pick up anything that expensive. CW, well the socks cost this much and the boxers cost this much, so with the sale that's what the total comes to. CM, no the boxers cost less than that. I read the sign, they definitely cost less. CW, would you mind showing me where you picked these up sir? CM brings her over to the boxer briefs bin. CW, I'm sorry sir, it looks like another customer put these in the wrong spot, pointing to where the boxers are on the wall. They're actually this much. My manager was in the men's section and stopped what she was doing to listen in. CM, well you had them in the wrong place so you have to honor that price. CW, sir I don't have control of where other customers leave things. There are no other boxers in this bin. They cost this much. If it was an error on our part I would honor it, but it isn't. CM, you need to honor the price. CW, no sir, I can remove the item if you aren't interested. CM, are you stupid? You need to do what I said. Manager intervenes. M, excuse me sir, what seems to be the problem? CM, I found boxers here in this bin and your employee won't honor the price. M, I'm sorry sir, it looks like a customer put them there. We cannot give you the boxers for the price of boxer briefs. CM, I have never been in a store that treats customers like this. You need to give me them at that price because that's where I found them. M. Sir, I do not have the authority to change the prices. At this point, literally the entire store is stopped and is staring at a distance at this enraged linebacker of a man screaming. C. M. Yes, you do. You can change the price. Do it now. M. I can't do that, sir. C. M. I ought to punch you in your smart mouth. M. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. C. M. No, you're going to give me my boxers. He has his finger in her face. At the lower price, not your ripoff price. At this point I left to call security, and apparently a couple of people had called police after the man threatened my manager. He's still screaming, but I can't tell what he's saying. The police department is only a few minutes down the street from the store, so by the time I was finished with security, the police were in the store and escorting the man who was still raging out. 
Security arrived maybe five minutes later and ended up escorting me and my manager to our cars after closing later as people reported that he was threatening us all. In case you were wondering, this was all over 250. And the last story is, I won't reset anyone's phone anymore. I work in a phone repair shop in South Florida. We see the worst. One thing we often have is people with the need to reset or restore their phone. I typically deny this service primarily for the reason I'm about to tell you, but I'd like you to understand how it's comical in a way. People that come through this door for whatever reason have a lower IQ than the rest. So when I tell people that a reset on their phone means that it deletes everything, they can't grasp or understand what that means. I go far into detail like this verbatim. Me, the restore erases everything on your phone. Pictures, messages, mail, contacts, apps, and everything will be gone. It'll be as if you never own this phone. A brand new phone as far as software is concerned. Everything of yours will be gone. That message has grown over the last five years because people just don't get it. So for a long while I had stopped offering to restore people's phones. I just got into the rhythm of saying our computer doesn't have iTunes and we aren't authorized. It was a win for me to be honest. I don't like this job as far as the customers go and the repairs. Perhaps a bad POV, but it's made me grow cold and numb. So saying no to someone isn't difficult, especially if I know the other outcome can possibly be an issue. So keep this in mind going forward. One day this mid-aged lady comes in, an ATT sent her because of an issue, and needed the phone reset. I had already started saying no, but my boss was like, nah man, let's just do it for her, because AT&T sent her and whatever. I asked him if he's sure, because she was already being a little rude, when she came in, and I got a not so bright vibe from her. So he tells me to do it, and I'm like, huh, you're the boss. I gave her the entire spill front and back. I reset the phone and immediately is lost on why everything is gone. I remember looking at my boss with a stare that said, you see why bro? She's then trying to log into her emails, and this is when she's screaming that her email is signed out. She's going on like this, OMG why the F did AT&T send me here, you deleted my emails. I start saying ma'am I told you this would happen when it's reset. She goes on saying I never said anything. I said um yes ma'am I did. She's like no you didn't. I go okay cool we have security cameras, so I pulled out my phone and went into our app, and went right to where we had the combo, and she then starts reverting and saying that it was unprofessional that I used the video as proof that I should have just went by what she said because customers are always right. So now the entire company doesn't do restores. Thank you for watching.